Mr. Wallace, I want to start by thanking you so much for taking time out of your schedule. I know you're sharing your craft and teaching people today, so thank you for taking time out of your schedule to talk with me today. It's a great honor for me being here and for you all having me here. Thank you. It's I an honor. appreciate that it's so an much. Honor for, for me too. Yes, thank sir. You. I appreciate that. Well, uh, Mr. Wallace, I wonder if we could start, if you could kind of tell me um, why you're here at the conference and, and what the conference means to you. Okay. Uh, I feel good being here, and why I'm here is because of uh, my roots, you know, and I really, it's interesting for me to find out who I am and where I come from. And could you tell me about how, now you live and work in the, in the Bahamas. Okay, well, I, I live in uh, Red Bay Andres, which is a small settlement, and it's like no, it ain't like no jobs, like that government job or anything. Mm -hmm. But the way we, so the only thing we do, the way we survive in Red Bay is like, uh, like doing art, you know, craft, art and craft, fishing, expansion and everything like that. Mm -hmm. That's the way we survive, but it's no government job or anything. You know, it's everybody's that's do their own thing. And Mr. Wallace, how did your, how did your family get there to, to the Mojaves originally? Was that, do you know how, and, can you go as far back in your family history as you as you can? Yeah, yes, I, uh, yes. Uh, you know, I used to talk to my grandmother. You know, uh, but this, it happened like this. I went to Nassau. You know, like growing up in Nassau, like the schools to get education and everything, the high school. When I came back, I lived with my grandmother. You know, and when I lived with my grandmother, she was by the age of like around maybe 70, in the 70, 70 something to 80, in the 80 something years old. You know, and she was like, gave me a, a whole rundown on, you know, like how, how you know, like with the family to do how she get there. But uh, she showed me, she was like uh, of an Indian breed, you know? So I asked her like, like what type of Indian breed you are? She said, seven old, you know? And, you know, it went on and on. So she showed me like my my uh, great grandparents, they came over to Florida, you know, like in canoes, you know, and that's how uh, they migrate with uh, the natives who they met there, and that's where she came from, you know. And then uh, I asked her, that, like, what breed? She said, Sammy Lewis, you know, all the Sammy and Joe Lewis then. You know, there was a similar in the period, you know. So she would tell you those stories when you were growing up? Yes. yes oh, wow. Yes. Would she also talk to you, uh, Mr. Wallace, about how uh, her parents or grandparents had lived, uh, about their culture, or? Yes, uh, well, when they came into Red Bay, it wasn't like, like any road to come out of Red Bay to go like other places. They just like walk all through the pine, yeah, like into a place called Lausanne, you know, to a destination if the, just to like get food and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. And after, after like about many years after, they had a, a company, a company came in and cut road through like who was like, it was like cutting down all the trees, you know, like big pine trees, and only taking it out to ship off the British, you know, the British. Mm -hmm. They came in and they run roads all through the place, you know, and that's how they end up like could drive out mm -hmm. and get out from where they're going. But if, if it wasn't like that, you take a boat, you got to take a boat and like skull, when it's, what they call skull, you know, you got to row, no engine, anything. They got to like skull all the way okay. around the low sound to pick uh -huh. up food or whatever. Uh -huh. If not, you got to put it like what, maybe three, four miles through the pine yard, crossing the water and everything for civilization. Okay, wow. that's. Uh... And Mr. Wallace, were there any, along with your grandmother, were there any other people that she came over or that her kind of identified as people who had come, come from Florida with the Seminoles? Was there a community or? Um... Nah, well, uh, the only time I get there, a lot of the Indians who came over, they already spread out. Mm -hmm. Some went into Lausanne. Because those sounds is, 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 is the closest settlement to Red Bay, you know, but it's on like more like the, the north side of the island, 
But the way Red Bay is situated, it's the only settlement on the west side, you know, from all civilization, the only settlement on the west side, and that's many hours to get there. Yeah. So most of the other people, you think, it went to Losan? They, they went to Losan, they went to Nicholastan. Mm -hmm. And uh, after a while, plenty of them went into Nassau to deal with the government, okay. you know, and uh, a lot of them get, like, citizenship or whatever. You know, then they could have returned back to Red Bears or wherever. Then they migrated and then spread out and started having children with this one and the next one. That's how the mix of coming came in. And Mr. Wallace, when you when you were growing up and you were learning about your the family history, how did you how did you identify? Did you identify with it with Indian ancestry or did you was that something you thought about or Well, after the history with my grandmother, you know? And even, even like we used to like, me and I used to go like a lot of other places because she had like a little peanut, she had a peanut field. Mm -hmm. We used to go and dig peanuts, she'd get like a big sack of peanut. And you know, I'd grab a bag, have a toilet and everything, you know, and stand down and be talking and, you know, carrying on. But, but what was so interesting, a lot of these places where she used to take me, I didn't like really thought about it till after a while. Then she actually died many years after. These same places I started going and getting my mahogany trees for wood carving. Because mm -hmm. only their trees we cut. So sometimes I excavate like all through the place, you know. Mm -hmm. And I started finding like old pieces of ceramic mm -hmm. plates with hand painting what the Indian did. Or like jug heads, you know, like the jug. I find all these artifacts. I got these right now, like in Andres. I was to bring them with me, but I forgot. But I have uh, pieces, I mean, I have artifacts to show. I used to run a museum in Fresh Creek. The whole red base, they, they first landed. Mm -hmm. it, was a low, it, was too, it was a low land. So they moved into a place called Lewis Carpet, mm -hmm. which is a higher part of Red Bay because of the hurricane, right? But in the old original Red Base, we even had like arrowheads would wow. be found. Even some of the old grave, grave, uh, grave uh, site, and then gravesite is right there right now. Okay. Yeah, you don't even have people there to like, you know, interview and everything. Okay. Yeah. But you would find maybe arrowheads or pottery when you were digging up the mahogany. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Did your grandmother, um, could you, would you mind talking about her? Like what kind of a person she was? What kind of influence she had? Oh man, uh, so warm hearted, you know? And one thing they believe, one thing they believe in, is natural food. You know, the most, th the only thing I, my grandmother mainly would have, like buy, you know, they like buy chickens and raise chicken, like grow up, like out chicken, like growing up, and raise for eating. Maybe grow up a little. Uh, she used to grow like pigs, you know, in those days. You know, the biggest hog you want to see, she grow uh, right. But the favorite, the favorite food, what we mainly eat, is like yam. You know, we plant yam, pigeon peas, you know, mm -hmm. uh, eddy, sweet potatoes, you know. But most all our food is grand food, all natural. Mm -hmm. Fishing, that's how we survive. Because like I said, was not wasn't any job. Right. You can't get to a show. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so uh, people say we was isolated, you know. You know? And then they had an old saying say, ah, I think a little red base and red base is behind God back. That's what it is all. When they say behind God back, that being like being existed. Uh, <laughs> you know? Outside of civilization. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but mainly, you know, most everything is like growing food, mm -hmm. fishing, you know. Then they grow, you know, you grow your chickens and everything, you know what I mean? But everything is field right. food. Okay. That's why they live so long, you know? Yes. Strong. And she was really mild, you know what I mean? Like soft hearted. You know, and my mom comes the same way. If you talk, talk too hard to my mom, she might start to cry. You know, because there's really loving people, soft hearted, you know, real soft hearted and hard working. Because uh, at the age of 80, my grandmother still was doing field work. At 80? At 80, she still was going around and planning, uh -huh. doing the field work and everything. That's right. Yes. Wow. What were the, when you were growing up, Mr. Wallace, what were the, um, important holidays or celebrations that people observe? Uh, mainly like uh, Emancipation Day 
what they call our Labor Day. Mm -hmm. You know, like from growing up, we met that going on, you know. And a lot of people call it like Emancipation Day in the Bahamas. A lot of people even call it like Fox Hill Day, you know. Fox Hill Day because uh, a lot of slaves landed and live in Fox Hill, you know, like from the Bahamas, you know. Andres, Adelaide, you know, all these places, the old village, you know, like old uh, ancient places, like God. But Labor Day was one of the main, main important holidays to the whole Bahamas. But they got emancipation day when 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 uh the Bahamas was free from slave slavery. Okay, and so it, in, in August. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Everybody respect that. Uh -huh. Would people tell stories about stories they'd heard from slavery times during those days? Like, how would you celebrate like Emancipation Day when you were a young man growing up? Well, you know, it's it's uh, what we do. You know, like it's a lot of like fun playing, right? A lot of people go like beaching, like swimming, you know, like boating, you know, like that's having fun. And then a, a big march, you know, like when it's a big march, you know, people like walk, walk, like everybody gather together and playing music and everybody toting the line, like marching, you know, showing up, like a big together, you know. Like a big march, rally. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. And how was was Labor Day? Was Labor Day this similar, or was it kind of a different feeling? But it's a it's a different feeling, mm -hmm. you know, because it's, it's a, it energized a lot of people, you know. It's it's different altogether. So it's it, it, it's a, like energy, you know, for everybody, you know, for for, for freedom, you know. I was in Trinidad in 2009 for Emancipation Day. Mm -hmm. and it was really a powerful event. Yes, the yes. The whole island. They mm -hmm. set up, uh, created a, a Kwame and Krumah Boulevard and a Malcolm X Boulevard, and wow. it, it was real the big marches. And, yeah, because yeah. uh, when I went to Nassau, you know, like on a Labor Day holiday, they had about over maybe about fifty different marching band. Wow! And and I thought, but it take maybe like hours. Because when one band, even the police band, the Royal Police Force, uh -huh. when one band pass, then you see that whole group, a couple hundred people pass, then you see the next band, the next band, and it keeps going on, going on, the whole, the whole, the whole country. Yeah. That's huge, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's so big. Mr. Wallace, now you, you have become a very uh, well-known and, and famous artist, mm -hmm. you know, throughout the, throughout the hemisphere. I wonder if you could tell me, like when you first, when did you first become interested in in art, and and who were some of your your teachers? Okay, when I first started out, when I was by the age of, I'd say five years old, the first thing I made was a, uh, you know, we used to like do like that's how the Indian do like, oh, let me see, that's how the Indian put these beads. Cause one of the brothers, one of my brothers, just bring this. Plus, I have a later to do oh, a ceremony yeah, I with. I got one of those. Okay. Uh, then, these little kids used to like have a lot of these type of beads, the uh -huh. smaller ones. Uh -huh. We used to have them by the pack because it was real cheap. And we used to like, let's be make, uh, putting, you know, making a necklace, right? And the first thing I made, that's knife, knife weaving. Only a knife I had then. One knife. Knife weaving, I did a cross, right? And take a regular nail, you know, like with your. Nail into a board, like just keep moving it around, around until I make a hole into the cross, like for the hind. Was it out of wood? It was out of wood, yeah. Okay. It was out of wood, and when I put it, when I made the cross and put it onto the necklace, and I started wearing it, hmm. a lot of the kids ran. They like they like it and they wanted, you know. So I I tell them, oh, well, I could do your cross, but it cost you a dollar. Uh, okay. You know, and I start off like start off doing like that, right? And then my brother, Mel Wallace, he died about uh, three years ago now. Okay. He was, he, 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 you know, he, he, doing, he, he started practicing, doing the same thing, you know. Like, like I don't know if it's a plan, but then I got say it was, it was there for us, you know. Mm -hmm. Then after making a cross, time by time, I had to start practicing knife weaving, and I started doing little tiki heads. Mm -hmm. Little tiki heads that go on the, on the necklace, you know, like little faces. African faces, mm -hmm. I started doing that, right? And then went on, when I reached about the age of eight, 
when she was at the age of eight years old, I started creating much better, right? And then at uh, the age of uh, 11, 12, while I was in junior school, we making, everybody making towel, uh, towel racks, you know, like in the wood carving class. Mm. Everyone making towel racks. Uh, let me see what else we make. He's practicing making chair legs, you know, like mm. in, the, in the towel class. But what I did, I always do my own thing. I take a piece of two by, uh, no, four by six. I grabbed a, a block chisel, you know, because in the, in, the, in, the, in the woodwork room, we had like block chisel. It wasn't no guard or anything there. Mm. Just straight block chisel, square chisel. And I grabbed a square chisel. And I started like panning on this with panning, panning, panning. Man, right? look, I create this nice image, like African face image, uh -huh. like in school. Wow. So the woodwork teacher, it's a pilgrim. The world way tell you always remember the pilgrim say, say, uh, Henry, say, everybody making tower rocks, they doing you, you're doing your own thing. What happened to you? I say, I say, I don't know why. I say, I just love this carving. Uh -huh. And when he look at what I did, he say, Man, so you need to try to keep this up. Try and brace this. You're doing good. Wow. You know? And every time you go to Woodway class, I carve and carve and carve and carve and carve. Okay. And I start creating more, you know. Better and better. And during that time, my older brother, Mel Wallace, he was working uh the host, you heard, you heard about the host assembly and also oh, yeah. down on Bay Street. Yeah. Downtown Bay Street was a uh, British Airways office. My brother was uh, like a messenger boy at that time, riding a umbrella scooter downtown. And Mr. Ollie Jones, John Panzer, they was the first two wood carvers in the whole Bahamas. You know, there was older men, and they used to be downtown Bay Street dealing with tourists in those days, right? Now, my brother, he walked, it's about maybe five minutes walk from British Airways, across the House Assembly, mm -hmm. to where all these gentlemen's carving. He went there on his break time, lunch time, waking out and start doing the same thing. Oh, wow. And he got, in the space of maybe a couple of months, my brother was doing so great. I mean, doing serious work. So, I was going to uh, uh, the school that's called uh, Oaksville Junior High School at that time. That's where I used to attend. So after school out, uh -huh. my brother had had me signing the, his carving now, right? Because you know all the time, he had me like signing his work. Signing, because I love carving. I said, sign his work. And now when you say sanding, is that after you do the carving? Yeah, after you do the carving, they could have finished it. I take a piece of sand, he just skip, uh, bring the way to me, so I just take a piece of sand, baby, and I start sanding, right? Because okay. I don't have to like, sand around the eyes, so I don't take the groove and anything out, you know? Mm -hmm. And he told me, say, say, Henry, you know something? You need to come, like, when school out, come downtown, I can let you meet Mr. Aldi Jones and John Ponce them, so you could put it on your old car and, I mean, like, get it going more serious, you know? Mm -hmm. And every evening, after school, I rushed downtown, the from all the band town. Because I used to live, a place called band town was like a slave village too. Mm. Right? I, uh, it's, it's a lot of history to band town. So when I leave from, Bain, from Augusta Street, band town, I go downtown, Bay Street, after, after school out, and I start like helping finish this older gentleman way. Mm. I was like a messenger boy then. Yeah. If I want to quit this thing, I got to be a messenger boy. So anything they want, they say, go this way, go the next way. I go to the shop, buy them what they need, you uh -huh. know, come back, sign their work. And you might not believe it. In the space of that time, in the space of like about a week to two weeks, all of my paces, what it's doing, start coming out much serious. Hmm. In the space of like about a year, I was going on the whole figures. Whole figures. I carved like whole figures, but the only thing I could do is carve them like with their hands to the side, hmm. you know? And as I go on, you know, I keep creating more. And at the age of 12, I went to an art exhibition against the top artists during that time in Nassau. At the age of 12? At the age of 12. Wow. It was Henry Fernando, Ripple Batis, all the John Pons, them, the founders. I went in an exhibition with them. And I was wow. at Oxford Junior High School. Mm -hmm. I have a man, you know, like, sound like this, with a drum between his legs. Okay. You know, and I had like a splendor uh -huh. come down, you know. 
And at the age of 12, I uh, got third prize for that piece against all these gentlemen. So as you were learning, your art was becoming more complex. Yes, yes. In a sense. Yes. Now, at, uh, at the age of 16, you know, I had come out of school because things were slow, you know, with the family and my mother. Instead of graduating from school, I, I, you know, I had to leave school at age 16 and go on with my carvings, you know. But to make, to make things much better, even in school, like, you know, I was really loyal to my teachers. So our teacher, uh, our teacher name is Nams. She's the teacher at catering, the catering department. I was one of the first black pizza chef in the whole of Nassau. Wow, pizza chef. Yeah, when I came out of school, wow. I got a big pizza too. So uh, okay. I, went, I went to this place called Swine. Uh, that was the only swine in the whole Bahamas. But now you got a lot of swine, dominoes and all that. Uh, it was yeah. the only swine in the whole Bahamas. I went there. Uh, to the Nassau Beach Hotel, they take me to Spank, I got a job, you know, but I still got a car during the time, but I just needed this money on a part, like every week on a fast pace to help my family. But I went there, the Italian guy named Robbie, he was leaving like maybe like in a week, two weeks time, so he had to show me what he know, mm -hmm. for me that you know, and I was passing online and catching on, you know. When he leave, I take over pizza department, young boy. Right? Change everything over from Italian to Bohemian. Okay. Everything. The sauce, uh -huh. I put my own blend to it. Uh -huh. The pizzas, I put my own, you know, the signs on the edge and everything and uh -huh. change up everything. And then listen again, we recording on the red, they recording on the red. There was my restaurant and launch the best pizza you could have, you know? Mm -hmm. And I did that for like for three years and I got fed up with it because I missed my art. So I went back, I told uh, the gentleman who owned the place, I'm going to be leaving you all soon, you know, because I really got to get into my carbon, you know what I mean? Because I got to make some money and everything is safe too, you know? And uh, I trained somebody else to do the job, and I went back into my carbon, and I ended up on Cable Beach, still on the same strip. Okay. You know, you know so a lot uh, of people already know me, you know? Right. Of course, from Nassau Beach Hotel, that's where I ended up, you know, but my place stalled. Because in them days we had a race track going on, our yards all the race track was going on then. Mm -hmm. A lot of foreigners from all walks of life coming over to have yards all the race track. And they start, this is start blowing with me fast, mm -hmm. you know? And I keep it up, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. Now, the Prime Minister, Selena Oscar Pennant, you know? Mm -hmm. The first black Prime Minister since we got independence. The hotel out west, the name Emerald Beach during the time. And it burned down, so they built a new hotel called Cable Beach Resort. I mean, like a casino and everything. And for the opening, here comes a letter to me from the Prime Minister. Mm. They want me to show my exclusive pieces for the opening wow. to Cable Beach Hotel to represent the Bahamas. That's my, that's the place one. The police bond before I'm first, then I come in with my work and everything. That was a big, big promotion for me. Then after that, from Cable Beach, Nassau Beach Hotel, right on the same line of Cable Beach, they, they, they hired me like for, they hired me to do like a thing called Bohemian Nights. Mm -hmm. You know, every, maybe every weekend, I take my work and set up in the, uh, I forget, it's a garden, they call it some garden, the Dasa Beach Hotel, you know, show my work, making good money. Wow. You know, and I just keep on and on, on and on, on and on. Then, to all the past, run the past, run up, I said, no, nah, I fed up with this place. You know, there's too much on me, I want to go. I need to get to, to a place where I can meditate right. and get on with my work and get deep into it, yeah. right? I closed my whole business down at the age of 21, mm. you know? Tell my mom, I got to get on Nassau. I'm going back home to Red Bay. She said, are you serious? You know how slow it is over there? You know, I said, I got to go because I think that's the only place I can really put it in my heart and relax so I can be happy. I gotta get out of the system because uh -huh, it's right. too much rush for me. Yeah. And you know, I left from the age of 21. I never been, I mean, never make up my mind to live back in the city anymore. Uh -huh. And when I came to Andres, I didn't have one kid. I had seven and a wife. Wow. My wife, Carvin, my little boy, six years, seven years old now, 
he's clapping also. My whole wow. family clapping. Yeah. Mr. Wallace, so as you were learning your art and getting you know, improving and kind of making more complicated, and you mentioned earlier um, Africa mm -hmm. and influence. Were you also, uh, was there an influence from the Indian side of your family that you began to kind of uh, bring into your art? Yes, it, it is. That's why I told people, they said, a lot of people ask me if I went to school for carving. But you know, I had to, I had to my work speak for myself. Mm -hmm. I told them it's, it really, it's it got to be an heritage. Mm -hmm. You know, from my ancestors, it got to be an heritage. Be an heritage, you know? Because most of my family, everybody are artists who not carving, they sing, cut records, you know? Even on my, you know, on my, on, all, on my, on my dad's side, my uncle, him and his whole family, they sing, they cut a lot of spiritual records, you know? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's gotta be an heritage, you know? Got three brothers with carving. My baby sister, she was doing like water painting from the age of five. Right now, she was teaching for over like 37 years. She teaches that also, and to Puerto Rico, you know, the whole family. So in your family, there's a lot of art, and it's always been a big part of your yes, uh, yeah. The heritage. yeah. When you when you're doing your artwork now, um, and someone mentions to you, and they use the term like black seminal, mm -hmm. what does that what does that mean to you? Like what? That you know, when they, when when they, when they mention black seminal, you know. I think about my grandmother, you know, because when you say black, I know my grand grandmother, you know, you could see the whole image of an Indian. Mm -hmm. Long black silk here, and she was not even fair skin. She was black, uh -huh. real black. Uh -huh. So when you have a black similar Indian, you know, for her color, I say, I see what they're saying now. What really amazed me and opened my eyes it's like when I really like started going to a different function. Like I, I did the 2004 Power Show up in Sterling, Florida with the Indians. Oh, okay. And I gave the chief, them a gift from the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. And I met this, this when I first met the Black Seminole Indian, like all the Machu and his uncle and the family like that. That's when I first met. That's where it opened my eyes and see what Black Seminole Indian is all about. Mm -hmm. But of course, I didn't ever know it was Black Seminole Indians. But I know my grandmother that looked like a real Indian, uh -huh. and she was black. Uh -huh. But I thought all Indians had a bright color, you know, <laughs> through right. watching movies, you know, right, cowboys, right, yeah, cowboys movies, and books. Yeah. <laughs> 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 when you're doing your, your artwork now, I mean, do you think about the, your Indian ancestry? Do you try to incorporate uh, certain motifs or ideas maybe from mm. uh, Indian culture? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you give me some examples of uh, even like you know uh, a lot of natural things even like with push medicine mm -hmm. when my when my grandmother was sick you know if she feel ill I watch her she never they never in my life growing up never went to a doctor everything they do is all push you know she showed me how to like the uh, Got a bush, you have a headache, what to do. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you know, I mean it goes on and on, right? And uh even the way like uh fishing, you know. A lot of a lot of even like I watch our uh, Abercrombie because he was in there and also he died three years ago. I never saw no one could go and take the hand and put it like under you know the mango root, mm -hmm. you know, like in the creeks, the mm -hmm. water. They uh, bash, bash, they call it beat the water. He tell me, you know, I grab a staff, like a piece of pine tree, a staff, and I stand like to the creek place. He said, beat the water, I start, bash, 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 bash. He said, all right, that's enough, come this way. And we went to the mangoes. And when you bash the water, all the snappers, they'll go into the mangoes and they'll lay it down sideways, like they sleep in the, like, the, like they hiding, right? Uh -huh. So I said, wow. You know, and he had a water glass, you know, like a water glass. Uh -huh. And we looked through the water glass, you could see the, all the snappers running the mango. And he'd say, watch it. He'd go there and he'd hold his hand and feel, and feel, and feel like that. And he'd just grab the fish like right in the gill. Wow. Live for the water. Uh -huh. Right? So I said, wow, that means, you know, they call it grubbing. They call uh -huh. it grubbing, right? So I learned a lot about that. 
you know? Uh, let me see now what else. You met, you were talking about some of the remedies uh, when your grandmother was was sick, or uh, do you remember, would she use certain roots, or? Yes, uh, when she's sick, she has a, a bush, she tied me on the bush called sarsi. You know, you take sarsi and burn it, it's like a little wine bush. Mm -hmm. You burn the sarsi, it's good for like cold, you got a flu. You burn sauce, you drink it maybe for seven days. It takes the flu away, mm -hmm. right? All the cold, the clean you out, you know? So you make it into like a tea? Yeah, you, you drink it as a tea. Okay. Even like uh, a, a pregnant lady, a, a woman out baby, you know? And they burn the sauce and drink it, it's the same thing, clean out. Okay. Then she showed me with the pinky winky. The pinky wing is called a uh, granny bush. Uh -huh. I think internationally, because I had a lot of uh, folks from the University of Florida, they came down to the study too. Okay. Pinky winky is called granny bush. Uh, it's good for a pregnant lady after birth. Mm -hmm. It cleans out and it's a blood purifier. You boil this tea, it comes like a strawberry color, mm -hmm. you know, and you could blend it with a little sugar if you want to or drink it natural. You know, I like drink it natural, you know. But all these things I learned from my grandma's, all these blood cleanser. Even the mahogany, she used to take the bark, you know, go to the mahogany tree, take a piece of the bark off. Then she'd peel the bark, and the inside, she steep that into, into uh, like a jug of water, and it comes red, 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 and better, 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 mm. better. But it, it, it builds your blood like in, 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 in seconds. You know, a person with low blood, mm -hmm. they drink the, Mahogany, steep mahogany bath. Oh, so that helps like the blood pressure or the, the, um... Yeah, if you have low blood, it, it, it builds it up okay. real fast, you know? Uh, and it's a blood purifier. That must have a kind of a bitter taste. Real bitter. <laughs> and that's what they made Campari of. Uh, Heard about a Bahamian drink called Campari? No, I don't It's red. It's called Campari. They mix it with our orange juice and they call it Bahamian Delight. Mm -hmm. And any bar, most bars you go and have used uh, in, in the Bahamas, you say, I want to be him like they mess the Campari with orange juice, but that's made from the mahogany bar. But they don't call it mahogany, they call it Madeira bar. Madeira bar. The native call it Madeira, you know? Wow, that's interesting. So when you, um, Mr. Wallace, can you tell me about, uh, you're doing uh, a lot of um, artwork here and showing people your, your art. Yes. What are some of the things that you're trying to, to teach people about your art? Well, I like most, most thing, the first thing I, I really uh, show people with my art, and I show them uh, what type of wood I use, you know, why I use it, you know, and plus I don't cut no live trees, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. My whole family, I show them that too. I appreciate nature, right? So the first thing I show them, and my peel, don't destroy nothing with living, like a live tree. The all the dead ones. Mm -hmm. The dead ones are already killed by nature mm -hmm. and it's antique, right? And why only use mahogany and horse flesh? Only two trees I use. No, three trees. Mahogany, horse flesh, and red cedar. You know the scented cedar? Oh yeah. You know, you can smell all that sweet odor from the red cedar. But I still, when I use that, they're all dead by nature. Mm -hmm. You know, all my trees have even standing up no bark, anything on it, but I cut it, it's all dead. Mm -hmm. And you got to know this tree because once the bark off, the tree look from a just look white. Right. I mean, because all the bark off, it's the outside look white, you know, like, you know, dead trees look white. Yeah. So, you know, it got to be, for you to tell that's a mahogany tree with no bark on it, uh -huh. or a horse flesh tree, you know, you got to be in this thing for a long time. Right. And I can stand up from a distance, and I can look, in, uh, if, if, you know, from a distance, I can look like through the forest, or uh, see the top of the tree, that's little branches, uh -huh. dead branches. And I could say, well, that's a mahogany over there. You know, because nature takes a course, you know? Right. You know, once you love nature, nature's going to love you. So nature, nature takes a course. Now, why only use mahogany and horse flesh? Because mahogany, once it die by nature and cure it, you could take a piece of mahogany wood and bury it into the ground, even in, into like a, a swamp. 
for many years and you go right there, when you take that piece of wood out, it's the same way. Mm -hmm. It's like gold. So the horse and the horse fresh wood, the same thing. The, my, my, my granddaddy, they build their own boats. You know, and they, they build their own boats. And with the horse flesh, then you, you know, like the rib structure, you build a boat, right? Mm -hmm. So the scaling of the boat, like the rib structure, right? You know, like when you put the, you know, like the side pieces coming up together, mm -hmm. then you marry it. Like you take a nail and put it into that and into the boat, you can't take it back over the horse flesh. The horse flesh is whole, it's just whole everything. Mm -hmm. You can't take it out and it's hard to break. That's why they use horse flesh, especially for their boat. If they go in anywhere, they hit a reef, it's hard for that boat to destroy. And over hundreds of years, you still find these boats around. Uh -huh. Hundreds of years. Okay. So that's why I put my wake into it, because I don't want my wake to die. Yeah. I mean, like, put it, that's for the money. I put maybe put my wake into, like, a soft piece of wood. And the person who bought, bought it, you know, they like it. They might look everything that came in front of them. Right. So it's bad. It's bad, you know. So I don't want that type of name. I don't want that name. Mm -hmm. I want my name to remain, for, like, for, for, you know, forever, you know. And I want my work to stand, you know, forever too, you know what I mean? From generation to generation can have it, you know? That's why I only choose those what. Do you, and do you uh, teach people now art? Uh... Yeah, but right now I, teach, I, I, I try to take a lot, especially for the summer, right? Mm -hmm. School closes now for the school kids. So maybe like July 2nd, okay. I'd be like having like classes, like from, you know, maybe like junior high schools. I have classes like that, like, you know, like maybe like a couple of weeks of classes like that, you know, that I, you know, supply them with material and everything. Uh -huh. I mean, I don't really charge them, you know, nothing big, but that's, you know, try to like right. keep it going on, you know. Is it something that you can teach Mr. Wallace or do you really have to, do you believe that you can learn to do what you do or is, is does it have to be part of your heritage or can you make it your heritage? Yeah, you could, you know, because, uh -huh. you know, like sometimes you find a lot of people that just admire the art and they want to get into it just for a hobby, you know? Mm -hmm. And then like, you know, like through your inspiration, right? Through your inspiration and your feeling, sometimes changes them, they want to do it forever too, you know what I mean? Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's a good feeling. You know, when you could create something, it's a good feeling. But I always put God first, you know? You know, because I say I know it's a girl, you know, so. Mr. Wallace, when you have, now for the conference here, you have, um, have you had the chance to, to meet other people, like other descendants, and can you tell me about your, like, your thoughts on meeting other descendants who maybe went to Mexico or Texas or Oklahoma? And, mm. Like, kind of, uh, what does it mean to you? Oh, man. <laughs> that was, it, it's, it's, a, it's a big uplift to me. You know, cause the first time my whole entire life, I travel. You know, I travel every year. I represent the Bahamas all over every year, and this is my first time like to this conference, mm -hmm. and it opened my eyes. I mean, it really opened my eyes so big. It, it left my heart so serious. You know what I mean? I mean, I was so happy. Tell it want to cry. But, I mean, it make me get like kind of emotional for how much are different people I met, like Indians of my own. You know what I mean? Like. Especially like the, the what they call it, Kalagichi. Right. I didn't even, the first time I met them was when I came here. And now it plans so serious that we really see who we are and we really, it's the same set of people. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the first time my whole entire life, I never was this happy. You know, now it's, it's, it's a, it, it, it inspired me to really know who I are. You know what I mean? That I don't, I want to maybe, I want to keep it going. I want to like come back again. And every function they have, I like to be there, you know, and let all us keep, you know, getting our family union together, you know. Mm -hmm. I even like them to come over the Red Bay because a, a lot of people, even in the settlement that we live, they don't know about this history. Uh -huh. They don't know. But it's, I, I learned a lot since I came here, you know, and it's, it inspired me to a lot of, uh, Things that educate me to know where I come from. You know, I learned a lot. Now, are you doing a panel at the the conference or a workshop or? or a... Yeah, but then since we came, we you know we they had me up uh, like 
for the two days I go up like maybe to a speech, come down and okay. you know, show them like the uh, lifestyle living over there also. We, uh -huh. we keep sharing sharing, you know, knowledge with each other. Okay. Yeah. Who are you, uh, Mr. Wallace, who went as your as you developed as an artist, what were some of your other kind of influences? Like as do you like look at other art or and then try to incorporate maybe some uh, okay. Where I get my really, uh, what inspires me a lot, like with nature, with nature, right? If I go on a boat, you know, I, I, certain fish I see, you know, even like the way they turn, that's what inspires me, you know? Uh, old fishermen, you know, old fishermen. I like, I like to culture things, like fishermen, marine life, you know? Then uh, sometimes I see like a, Maybe an old man, uh -huh. look, you know, he maybe look special to me, right? Say special, you know, even the looks is a different character or whatever. You know, that's the kind of person I say, wow. And that's a nice piece of art in the world, you know? I mean, like, through the way the yeah. person look, you know, I mean, you know, unusual looks. Yeah. I love it, unusual looks. And I just look at a person and but they, whatever they're dealing with, and I put that in the piece of work just like that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What and you and I notice you kind of return to to fishing like fishermen. What is it about fishermen that um, you find interesting? Well, uh, the way they dress, uh -huh. you know, you know, like, you know, the ancient way. Let's straw hat, you know, how they have the straw hat on. Yeah. Then you know, like long pants. Then you know, they roll up their pants, step in the water. You know, they have their pants like roll up. Right. So when I carve them, I put like a roll on the pants and everything, you know what I mean? Yeah. Even like the expression, you know, if a person throw the line, they catch a fish out, they have an expression. Uh -huh. See, all that got me, you know, so <laughs> that's what <laughs> I do. So you're I looking love it. for like expressions or a, a gesture or someone turns or even a fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you, and you're really looking, if I understand you correctly, you're really trying to see what's happening in nature. Right. And somehow trying to translate that into your your art yes sir okay. yes sir is there any particular uh, what have been some of your favorite pieces like your if you think of your all-time favorite piece mm -hmm. um, can you tell me about it like what went into it how long did it take you to do okay what, what was your inspiration for it yeah I did a, a sea world piece I got a reef a reef sand you know I did the lobster a hawksbill turtle, especially endangered species, like the hawksbill turtle. Okay. You know, I always call them because I know they're endangered, so, you know, I keep that going. But I had the turtle, the lobster, the bonefish, you know, uh, the conch. You know, I had all these, like, in different dimensions on one piece. And one piece? In one piece, yeah. On mahogany? Yeah, that piece was about, uh, four, about four feet long. That's a big tree, maybe two and a half feet to three feet. Uh-huh. And wow. yeah. And I sold that before, four thousand five hundred. Wow. Four thousand five hundred. It took me about uh, maybe oh close to a month. Uh-huh. Close to a month to do. That's incredible. How did you when you were carving the 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 different sea uh life, like you said lobster? Lobster, turtle, bonefish, conks. Now, do you do that from memory? Yeah, all imagination. Okay. Yeah, all imagination. imagination. Everything I use, all imagination. Sometimes, I, and, the, and even the, the staff, people will be standing looking at me, what you going to do there? I say, you can put a, a tail here, come up as you. I say, you see it? Look, you can see it in the wood. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, I look at the wood. I say, uh -huh. you look at the wood, you can see it right there. Because sometimes the wood even have a, a funny shape to it. Uh -huh. You can see, like, like all right, the wood all over, the wood ran, right? You can see like a funny shape to it. You can see the image already in that wood too, you know? Uh -huh. Most time you can see it there, you know? So I just grab a hatchet, uh -huh. you know, the reg a regular hatchet, and people watch me, you know, and I just say that the tail go in here. I start chopping. Then I chop so far. I wouldn't chop the whole tail already. Right I'll chop so far to make sure I get that one. Here on the side. Uh -huh. Then like I grab a table here and I wanna put a fish here. I make a space in the, in between here, make gorgeous. So the fish could be like conversating 
as much to look at your head looking this way and maybe the fish looking at him. Okay. Like all one family conversating. Uh-huh. Communicating. Communicating. Okay? Yeah. So I'd make it space in so it don't be like linked together. Right. Everything spaced off, looking real. And I'd call it bonefish maybe looking at the fish. Uh-huh. Then maybe like even like sea crabs, everything, I put everything, you know, spaced out on one piece. And everything is action. On my fishes, I never call a fish straight. Uh-huh. Every time I call a fish, it's tail, swerve, you know, make the action, you know what I mean? So is it moving in yeah, motion? Yeah, yeah, everything in motion, motion yeah, nothing uh-huh. straight, motion. And that's very difficult to do with the piece. I'm just trying to imagine this with a piece of that of that nature. Mm-hmm. You'd really have to think about this, the spacing of the different, right. different creatures. Yes. Uh, it's almost like thinking about uh, music, like a 16 bar song, mm-hmm. you have to, and if you're creating like lyrics and you have to figure out, well, how many words can I fit within this? Right. Kind of a, a similar. Mm-hmm. So, and you're always trying to capture nature, not capture, but trying to show nature in motion. Yes, sir. What have been, uh, are, there, are there still some types of artwork that you haven't done yet that you really want to try sometime? I got, I better tell you the truth, man, I believe it. I got but over a couple of hundred designs in my head. Okay. <laughs> I mean, already right now, but I ain't put it uh-huh. out yet. You know, sometimes I lay down and go sleep. Like, they, they carving is so serious into my head. Mm-hmm. I better lay down overnight. It's just like, I, I'll carve a whole piece in uh-huh. my, in my in dream. Head, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I lay it down and I see myself carving like certain pieces. You know, like, and when I wake up, I'll tell my wife, I say, that did you know something? Man, I dreamed last night, like I was carving the certain piece. And I say from start to finish, I already see what, is, what it is, you know? And I'll go into the forest, you know? Look, maybe find the right piece of wood, the uh-huh. dead tree. But when I bring that out, the same thing I tell I'm going to do, uh-huh. I start chopping it up. Cha, cha, pa, 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 pa. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Have you thought about now, you talked about how, um, how inspiring the, that this conference has been to see people from different, mm-hmm. yes, uh, and to realize the unity of, of people. Have you thought about um, if you were going to create an art piece mm-hmm. based on your experiences at, at this conference and meeting people? What I love that, I love that. You know something? I look at uh, certain even pictures like with Indians, you know, and I already saw one of the warriors with the show. I already saw it now. When I go home, uh-huh. I know I had a big, I have a mahogany trunk, maybe about that big around, and standing maybe over like five to six feet where I live in the forest. Now, for me to get it up there, I let to wake it in the forest, keep going with my tools and time by just keep waking it time by time until I get it down like the, what I need, mm-hmm. and maybe try to get it out. <coughs> but I already see a warrior, uh-huh. but I really want to put it in that. I mean, that's true, seeing this, Make, make people, you know. Yeah. I gotta do one. I got. I gotta do this. This, this warrior. And it's I mean, of, it, it's still it's here now. To you talk about it, uh-huh. you just make me get more inspired to do it now because I see it. You know, when you when you mention that, it make me start like seeing it more. You know. Yeah. So when I get home, that's gonna be one a piece I do. And I hope and I hope when I do it, I give you a picture of it. Okay, I appreciate. Seriously, that. I'm gonna do that. I tell you, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Okay, I would really yeah, appreciate I'll that. I do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that has always amazed me how a really good artist, and whether it's a painting or a sculpture, carving, different types of drawings, mm-hmm. how people, if you're a really good artist can make it appear as if uh, the, the, the piece is in motion and mm-hmm. that it's moving. I've always really admired that. Yes. I mean, Some people ask me, said, Henry, this is a straight piece of wood. How did you carve the bonefish? You know, straight piece of wood, mm-hmm. right? But the trick is, if a, if a tree this this broad, right? I got a tail, like say the tree this broad, mm-hmm. I can bring the end of this tree, right? Like turn it all the way over to this end of the end, right? So when I finish this piece of wood, when I finish the bone fish or whatever fish I carve, I'll have his tail sway all the way around me, and like he, you can see in motion, like swaying, like an action, you know what I mean? Sometimes, even the, 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 the dorsal fin. The dorsal fin, yeah. Like, you know, I, I put it in different motion. Sometimes I like put it like, I'm a fish starting down. Mm-hmm. I have the dorsal fin more like laying down a little okay. instead of all the way up. Because uh-huh. that's the way they do, you know? 
if they on approach, you know, instead of the tail like wide like that, the tail coming more angled, right? The the dorsal fin it drop lower, cause you know he on the speed. Mm -hmm. But if he grubbing, you know, like like that, automatically all the fins up, you know, and you can see it moving. You know what I mean? The tail will be more spread wide open because you know. So I do everything in different motion. Okay. Everything. The uh, Mr. Wallace, I wonder, thinking about the history, is there much knowledge? Of, uh, are, are people telling stories about Indian ancestry at, at Red Bays, or is that something that's kind of died out? Uh, a lot of the folks there, you know, like the young, a lot of the older, or the older folks died out, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, Mr. B. A. Newton, he did, he did books, you know. On the similar note, and then he write uh, about my grandmother, my great grandmother, and you know all the time he was them. He did, he did books, right? But uh, a lot of the kids then, they don't know a lot of that history, you know. But now, through the university, you know, they come down, they make it, they try to all through Doctor Russell and Harvard also. Mm -hmm. They came down a group and then open started opening up a lot of the kids' eyes to it too, you know, like bringing it in school and whatever, you know. Because a lot of history really lost in the Bahamas. I mean, like, they don't really teach it that much, mm -hmm. you know? But after all the Dr. Ross and Harvard them came down and they started, like, dealing with the schools, mm -hmm. things started to, like, push more, you know? And I love that. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it seems like it takes maybe a push from people on the outside. Sometimes. Right. Yes, yes. That's, 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 that's what I'm talking about. What what type of like in the mainstream school? What kind of history were they teaching about something uh, British? Or? British and Christopher Columbus and all those other type of things, you know. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> One of the things I found out that just blew my mind when I was in Trinidad was that people had celebrated Emancipation Day from the time of, of emancipation mm -hmm. all the way to about the 1880s, yes. and the British had ordered them to stop celebrating. Mm -hmm. And they even killed people. Yeah. And, trying, and then they forced them to celebrate Christopher Columbus Day. Right, right. Up until independence. I was like, wow, <laughs> in Trinidad. It was like, uh, yeah, they, cause they come with something called Prince Antonio Day. I say, what? And that's like Christopher Columbus. Uh -huh. You know? I never, I don't, see, I know, I know, I know better than that. Yeah. You know, I mean, first, I didn't know, you know? But I see. And I know now, you know, right. and I never, you know, I show my kids them. I tell them, don't like, don't even think about that. Yeah. You know, I said, don't mind that history of Christopher Columbus. Try to learn some black history right now. Uh -huh. You know, like, you know, it's learned by ourselves. You know, our uh, ancestors. You know, when I go, when I place, when I place go in the school, right? As a little, uh, a young, a, a little kid, they had a book called The Royal Reader. It's a blue book, had uh, the British color on it, you know, it says it's a blue book, because they color blue, right? Navy blue. And I had one big rooster on the back of the book. Mm. And the only thing was in that book was jokes. The cow would jump over the moon, that was such a fun, you know, all kind of yeah. stuff like that. And then you got to study these things, like for BJC and all this, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, if I study these things with BJC and I come to the United States and I want a job, and they asked me my certificates or whatever, and I gave it them, would you pass in English or what? And I started telling them, well, I, yeah, I passed in this, and what was the subject? And I'd be lying with the cow jumping over the moon, all kind of, <laughs> and people look at me like a crazy. Yeah, right. You see, it was a brainwash thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, and the only national animal we had is singing God Save the Queen. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing we know. Yeah. You know, it was, it was so, you know. <laughs> That's colonial, <laughs> yeah. colonial education. Yeah, anyway. yeah. Uh, Mr. Wallace, like on, on, on a spiritual level, what, uh, how do you see the relationship between Africa and uh, Indian culture? Do you see those? Yeah, I see the two of those, the two of those culture. It's about the same thing, yeah. Because, you know, the Indians, the same with the Africans, like, you know, like nature-wise live, I see the same thing with the Indians, you know, and and then uh, even like the spirit, like 
they so spiritual like a lot of people believe like in praying you know you know or have a ceremony going on or whatever you know it's, it's spiritual and you know the natives is the same way you know you know that's like for the person going to church like how they say the baptist is the that's the biggest organization in the Bahamas because mm -hmm. they do a lot of jumping and clapping you know even the dance out there you know the same dance with the indian how african same thing same thing. That's a little, a little slight different beat, but it's the same oh. beat, dance, everything. Yeah. You know, you can do the same way. <laughs> <laughs> is that now, is there, do you see a difference in schools now in, in the Bahamas in terms of? Oh, uh, yes. It's, it's a lot different now. Because oh. uh, a, a, a lot of eyes open. And right now in, in the Bahamas, they're getting. They got a lot of black history going on now. I mean, like real knowledge. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say black history, but real knowledge, you know? Because okay. color makes no difference with me, you know? You know I mean, some people highlight how a higher color or whatever, but all the same, you know? But when I say in the prayers are like black, you know what I mean? They got to know they sell, you know? But uh, there's no races of color when you start wearing the speech. You know, everybody's all one. Uh, but uh, and of all, if, if, if it's only with one color, then the picture still don't look good. You know, for a bit of, bit of brighter color and a light color, whatever, they make the picture better. Oh. So I say that's, I love that. Oh, <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh and I, Mr. Wallace, I forgot to ask you your, your grandmother's name. Uh, Rosa Lewis. Rosa Lewis. Yes. She was of uh, Sammy Lewis okay. and Joe Lewis then. And that was your, so you know, you, your, and, and then what was your great, you talk about your great grandfather also, or? Yeah, my, uh, my, uh, my great grandfather was from uh, Ragged Island. Mm -hmm. But they was, uh, I think, like through slavery, they, uh, slave master mm -hmm. was Wallace. Okay. And that's how I ended up with that Wallace name to my, to my dad, oh. you know. And they must have, did they, and I was, you know, I, earlier we talked about Emancipation Day, and I've, uh, were there any celebrations that, um, where uh, Indian culture was kind of emphasized, or did that kind of get folded into maybe Emancipation Day? Uh, I wouldn't say, uh, see, I think it's a problem right there, right? Because, mm -hmm. like I said uh, again, a lot of Bahamians, when I even said, when I, when I, when I talk about uh, Black Seminole Indians, mm -hmm. right? Or Indians, a lot of Bahamians, they still don't believe that, mm -hmm. you know? You know so, but when they celebrate it, like that, they're just, you know, going with like slave to do, like Africa. They don't even mention like Indians and they just think about Africa, you know. But I told them that's where the Seminole Indians really started off from, that's where they came from. All the way through, uh, from Africa, all through Angola, you know. Mm -hmm. And then coming into Florida, you know. Do you remember the first time that you you set foot in, in Florida and what, what that meant to you and kind of what your, your feelings were about coming to, to Florida? But the first time I stepped foot in Florida, you know, it was, it was different altogether to me, you know what I mean? It's a different feeling, you know, and, and I had a warm welcome, you know, and it made me always want to come, you know, and I love, I love uh, uniting. Yeah. I love uniting, you know. Were you able to teach some art when you were, when you first came or did you? Yeah, I worked, I worked with, uh, I worked with uh, and, uh, at, uh, the, I could get a center like in, you know, like in the University of Florida. It's a square up in there, I try to remember the name. You know, like where everybody went to eat and lunch. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a big square in there, like where everybody did. Oh, the Plaza of the Americas, maybe by the library? Or... Up in that area. Okay. Yeah, I, I got, uh, I took a piece of, I had a piece of robot over there to, to start, you know. I sit down like in the square and then had everybody coming around watching me work and everything. Uh -huh. That's when I inspired them to come to the Bahamas. Oh wow! Okay. Then from there, 
you know, I start telling them they want to do a class, you know, if you uh -huh. get to this, do that. Then Brad introduced himself to me, the Woodway teacher. Uh -huh. And when I get back to, uh, to, to Andres, in the space of like maybe a couple of weeks, I had uh, all of the kids them come over. And it went for four years. Wow. And some of the biggest money was paid to me was straight to the university. But I don't know what happened uh, automatically after four years, everything stopped. But I think like somebody had someone else take over mm -hmm. the position of the dean. So that's what make everything different. Okay. You know, but I had for four years all the all the top artists from uh sculpture class I work with. Wow, that must have been really yeah. exciting. I got a book I was gonna bring it with me with the University of Florida. But it has a big big it's a big mahogany bowl like uh, like that. Uh -huh. with a handle on it and then it had like two bone fishes like kissing. You know, I sold that board for like thirty five hundred. Wow. A bone fish now. He did order it and I just had it on the show with them and he came he came from the States and pick it up, yeah. Well, uh, Mr. Wallace, we're near the end of our, our tape run. Yeah. Is there uh, other th uh, maybe closing thoughts mm -hmm. that you have? That you... Oh, but you know, I went to the Smithsonian, you know, I was to the Smithsonian, right? Oh, yeah, you mentioned that. In yeah, the... yeah, yeah. I did that in 94. 94. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, George Mason University. I've been around, you know. I, I did a lot of shows, lots of shows, and the most, uh, I, for artists in the Bahamas, I, I think it has some of the most award for being an artist in Bahamas right now. What would your, what would, uh, if you were giving advice to a, a young artist or a beginning artist starting out today, what, what would the, your main advice be to that person? Well, you're talking about what that would copy? Yes. Well, uh, I like to say, well, it's good to always try to be focused, right? And always try to be careful using your tools, mm -hmm. you know? Because even like, see what carving is a serious thing, even like using a hatchet. If you don't know how you're using that, you can damage yourself. So the first thing I do, even like in the class, I demonstrate and show you how to like chop away from your stuff. Don't ever use no tools coming to your hand like that. Mm -hmm. Because that experience, I got to tell them through all the cuts I had. I never get cut no more. Uh -huh. And I want my fingers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, your fingers. right. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay. Well, Mr. Wall, thank you so much. I mean, this has been a really learning experience for me. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank, thank you. you. It's thank been you an too. honor to talk with you, and I look forward to seeing more of your artwork. Yes. And hope that you can visit us up at Gainesville again. Yeah. yeah. When you get there, you ask them about me. In okay. Gainesville, the University of Florida, you ask about me. Oh, I know. I and know. try, have you met the, wood, the woodway teacher, Brad? Uh -huh. You tell you, when you said, hey, when you, that's telling you who had me on the you, and you'll see what's happening. I, 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 I got a picture right there. I'll okay. show you. I'll show you the picture of it, Brad, and the class. Okay, so I'll share this. We, it's okay if we share the videotape with him. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll do that. He loved that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs>